I used to be a long distance runner and long distance running is a high intensity sport. The repetitive motion and stress on my joints over a long period of time, along with possible trauma and strain, caused some damage to my joints. Over time, these injuries accumulated, causing degeneration and inflammation in my joints, which eventually developed into arthritis. My legs would often become painful and sometimes it was very difficult for me to walk. I was treated conservatively at first, but there was no improvement. During my treatment, I spent a lot of time in prayer and Bible study. Then the doctor suggested that I should have surgery this time because the conservative treatment was not effective. We later set a date for the surgery. I contacted my family and asked them to pray for me. On the morning of my surgery, the nurse said to me that I was the most relaxed person she had ever seen before surgery. Upon entering the operating room, they gave me an anesthetic. My consciousness started to become fuzzy. After a while, I felt very uncomfortable. My heart started to become irregular and it felt like it was about to stop. My breathing also became more and more difficult, as if a force was preventing me from breathing. I tried to open my eyes, but I couldn't feel my body. I felt so scared that my body started to struggle constantly, but I couldn't control it. In the process, I realized that I was experiencing a severe physical reaction, possibly to a drug allergy or other complications. I hoped the doctor would act quickly to help me regain normal breathing and heartbeat. After a few more moments, the world went quiet and my pain disappeared. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the ceiling of my room. I heard the doctor ordering the nurse to get more blood bags. My face looked pale. I knew it was my own body, but I didn't feel alarmed or worried. I made my way through the walls of the room and into the hospital hallway. I felt no resistance as I crossed the wall. While I was in the hallway, I noticed an elevator door open. A man rushed out. His anxiety caught my attention. He was wearing a black jacket and he was carrying a briefcase. He walked hurriedly toward the operating room slowing down at the entrance to the operating room. He was having a conversation with another doctor. I don't remember the content of their conversation, but I know the man was also a doctor. They were arguing, and the doctor was complaining about the doctor in the black coat. Suddenly, I started to go through the hospital ceiling, as if I were being pulled by some mysterious force. I continued to rise until I crossed the roof and found myself over the hospital. After I got out of the hospital, I started to go over the city at a faster speed. I was moving so fast that I should have felt the wind blowing past me, but I felt none of this. I entered a cave-like area where I moved quickly for some time. Then, a small bright light appeared ahead of me. I came into the light. I saw the back of a man ahead of me. I subconsciously thought I should follow him. He had very long hair and was wearing a long white robe of a coarse material, and he had sandals on his feet. He smiled and waved to me, inviting me to come closer to him. As I approached him I felt an unspeakable joy and peace. I felt his presence was so kind and warm that I did not feel distant or unfamiliar with him. He welcomed me with open arms. Here, I reviewed my life with him. I saw something that made me feel proud. It was in my college days when I joined a volunteer organization. We would go to a nearby community every week to help the elderly and children there. I would clean their rooms, talk with them, and take the kids to play games with them. One time, I saw an old grandmother who hadn't been out for a long time because of her poor health, so I accompanied her to the park for a walk. That afternoon, we walked along the garden. 
the grandmother always had a smile on her face. This experience gave me a deep sense of the joy and meaning of helping others. However, as we look back on my life, I also see a bad thing that makes me feel ashamed and remorseful. During my college years, I copied someone else's answers in an exam and ended up getting a good grade. When I saw this incident, I felt guilty and regretful. I knew I had cheated myself and my professors. When it was all over, I turned my head and looked at Jesus. His expression was gentle and forgiving, without reproach or praise. I felt a little nervous and worried, wondering what he thought of me. After a while of silence, Jesus suddenly spoke up and asked if I wanted to hang out with him. I felt a little surprised, but I also felt very happy. I replied, sure. We walked up a flight of steps and before us was a gorgeous idyllic landscape. The meadow was full of bright flowers, which I had never seen before. There was a small river in the meadow. We came to the river and on the other side I saw loved ones who had died. They were gathered together. I saw my father and grandfather first. They saw me, too, and they were as excited as I was. One of them I didn't recognize, but I later learned that it was my great-grandfather. He had passed away before I was born, so I had never met him. We communicated through telepathy. When I thought about hugging them on the other side of the river, Jesus told me that now was not the time. I followed him for another distance along the river. I saw a beautiful Greek-style building in the distance. It was vibrant white and had many steps leading up to it. There were huge columns in front of the door. Many people were wearing vibrant white robes. Jesus led me inside. Inside was like a huge library filled with books. This is the Library of Heaven in which are kept all the books of the world. Jesus said, pointing to the bookshelves around him. I was so surprised and excited that I walked over to the bookshelf and picked up a book at random. The words on the pages of the book gave off a strong glow that made me feel a surge of energy flowing out of the pages. I wanted to open the book and look at it, but found that the words on it were not in a language I was familiar with. Jesus seemed to see my confusion. These books contain all kinds of knowledge, some of which you cannot understand at the moment. Here you can learn anything you want to learn. I continued to rummage through the bookshelves and found a book filled with musical notation. I found that it contained all the music on earth, both classical and modern, and their scores were fully recorded in this book. Jesus looked at me, smiled, and said, This library is not only for learning, but it can also help you discover your potential and become more complete. Jesus walked toward a bookshelf, picked up a book and handed it to me. I opened the book and inside was a record of my entire life. Everything from my childhood days to today. Jesus looked at me and then said, These are your histories and I know every moment you have experienced, for better or worse, and I love you. I have always been there for you. Jesus then said, Now, I give you a choice, you can choose to go back to earth and continue your journey or stay here with me. I felt an irresistible force pulling me toward Jesus. I knew I wanted to stay here and be with him. His love and attention made me feel more at ease than I had ever felt before. I said to Jesus, Can I see my family now? The next thing I saw was the hospital scene. The doctor was talking to my mother. I couldn't hear their conversation, I just saw the scene. I saw scenes of family and friends saying prayers. Each prayer appeared like a note, one after the other stretching toward where I was. I remembered that my father died when I was very young. My mother worked very hard to raise me. If I choose to stay, I shudder to think of her life afterwards. 
As difficult as it was to leave this place of love, I knew I had to go back. Jesus told me, if you choose to go back, most of the memories of being here will be erased. When I answered Jesus that I wanted to go back to earth, he smiled and nodded his head. Jesus reached out and gently stroked my head. He said, don't be afraid, I will always be by your side to protect you and guide you. Then, I felt myself return to my body. My consciousness gradually became clear. I slowly opened my eyes and found myself lying in a hospital bed. A doctor was beside me, carefully observing my condition. I took a deep breath and felt my strength return. I knew that Jesus was always by my side, guiding me and taking care of me. I felt energized again. I knew that my experience was completely real. The love of Jesus stayed with me during those weeks. I was in the hospital for 12 days after the surgery, first in the ICU and then in the general ward. I was completely confident that I would recover because I knew I was back here for a reason. I still remember how surprised I was when the doctor who saved me came to visit me for the first time. We had never met before that time, and he was the doctor in the black jacket. This doctor was very welcoming. Shortly after I returned home, I shared my experience with my mother. I told her that my soul left my body while I was undergoing surgery. I saw the doctor with the black jacket in the hallway. When I shared my experience in heaven with my mother, she began to doubt what I was saying and didn't seem to believe that I had actually experienced it. But when I mentioned that I had also met my great-grandfather in heaven, my mother's expression suddenly became serious. She asked me to describe in detail what he looked like, trying to determine if I had actually seen him. I began to describe his appearance. I said he was tall, with a white beard on his face and a mole under his right eye. I also described some conversations I had with him. My mother was stunned to hear this, because I had never seen my great-grandfather before. There was no picture of him in the house either. My mother knew I was not lying. This fact shocked her and made her even more convinced of the existence of heaven because great-grandfather looked exactly as I had described. It was no coincidence that she came to truly believe that I had seen Jesus in heaven.